Okay, today I am here with Tom Lee from Lovo, a synthetic speech platform. Hi, Tom. How are you? Hi, Bernard. Good. How are you? I'm very good. So you're joining us from Korea at the moment. Where, 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 where are you based? Uh, so we're originally based out of Berkeley, California, um, but I, my family's here, and you know we have a lot of team members here as well. So I decided to fly out to Korea for a little bit. I'm in Seoul at the moment. Lovely, lovely. So tell us a little bit more about Lovo and what what this synthetic speech platform is and what it offers. Sure. Um, so you know, Lovo, in I think simpler terms, we can call it a text to speech or TTS AI based platform. And what we do in essence is, you know, you have a script that you want to turn into voice or audio content. You go on a website, you upload the document, choose a voice of your liking very, uh, based on persona, character, and language. And, you know, it's a click of a button, it turns into audio. And where, you know, you might wonder why, where, or who might use this. So it's used in a variety of industries. So first of all, um, it's in using marketing. So if you want to create a quick, uh, audio ad or digital ad, you know, we would use our script-based uh, audio, um, create, uh, create ads. And then for e-learning, whether it's for kids in school or for corporate training, you can use us as well. And uh, with the AR and VR coming around very, uh, very hot lately, you can use in those apps as well. And lastly, if you think about call centers, you can call your phone company, press one for English, press two for Spanish or French. Um, that's where we're also used fascinating so um how does this work in practice then maybe you can tell us a little bit more about how, how you use artificial intelligence and machine learning to turn someone someone's voice into a a digital version um i when i when i spoke to you before you you, you said that you just need 15 minutes of for example me speaking and you right. can then give this to your machine learning algorithm and this will then turn this into a thin synthetic voice of me which is pretty epic so how, how does that work yeah so we have a specified script that's about 15 minutes long uh, we balance it using our uh, ai machine learning uh, to make it the most optimal uh, length and, and, and content as well so we'll give you that script to you and then um, once you record the audio, give it back to us. We run it through a machine learning algorithm. And then after it's produced, we do some quality control and, and human editing to make sure there's nothing wrong. And then it becomes available to you as an option. Very good. So can you can you show us a little bit of how, how, how this would work in practice? Sure. Um, I'm going to share my screen real quick. Can you see my screen? Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, well, it's going to feel weird um, having Jemima speak my name, but here it is. Hello, my name is Tom. Happy Friday to all the listeners out there. So that, that's very that's nice. A nice, yeah. nice English accent. Yeah. <laughs> um, let me actually try a US accent and then see how that works. Um, my personal favorite and actually our, our favorite uh, by users of all users, actually. And just for anyone watching this bit of text you have just typed in. So this is no one has. Do you want to change it a little bit? Just to sure. demonstrate that this is. What should I say? Um, uh, wow, I'm really bad at this. <laughs> <laughs> Happy weekend. Perfect. Um, <laughs> nice. No, sorry. Just. Log me out. I think my app is as nervous as I am typing this out. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, this is fascinating. Happy weekend, everyone. Time to grab a pint very soon. Nice. And, and on the horizon, it's not just the, 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 this, you're also building in more emotion and other mm -hmm. things. So what, what's on the, on, on, in, in the pipeline for you? Yes. So this is actually, I don't think I've actually revealed this to anyone. So, um, I guess call you a premiere, but, um, <laughs> so we actually figured out a way to add emotion. So whether it's, you know, laughing or shouting or crying, 
and even singing. Um, here's a two different version of two different laughs. Let's see if you can hear the difference. <laughs> I'm amazed when some men say love. <laughs> I'm amazed when some men say love. Very interesting. So you, this is again, you're recording their laughter and this is then digitized. And then in the future, you will be able to have these emotions in the content that is then automatically generated, right? Yes. So our goal and what we're trying to figure out is, you know, do we put a button here that says ha or laugh? And then do we put a button here that says make that laugh two, three, four times or you know, do you, would, would users want like a lever that you see in, in professional studios or what is the best way to present this to the user for the most efficient and easy way for them to use it? And that's the only reason we just haven't been able to publish this yet. Um, and I guess that that fault lies on me because our team has done a great job building this machine and, and, and voice out. I just haven't done a good job of figuring out where to put it. Very good. And then you, it's not just a speaking voice, a singing voices as well that is on the horizon, right? Yes, it is. Um, and we actually don't have uh, an English singing voice yet just because none of our, none of our customers requested it yet. But check this one out. So this is again, yeah. oh, sorry. Go ahead. so this is a, a song that this person hasn't actually sung. So you give yep. them the text, you give them the notes, and then the tool puts it together into a song, right? Yes. So if you imagine, you know, having the codes for the notes as well as the lyrics, and you put that into our system, um, this song comes out because when we had this initial um, singer record, we didn't have a single song at all. And so this is all pure new creation. It's amazing. Yeah, if you want to unshare your screen, this is pretty cool stuff. Um, so what what do you think the implications are for all of this for people that are in this space? So if you're a voice a voice actor, you might think, hey, that that's my job out of the window in the future. And um, if you maybe even if you're a, 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 a trainer or a TV presenter, um, what would this mean for 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 humans? And and will will it take more jobs? What how do yeah. you see that happening? I think the the most often I'm asked, hey, you know, AI is taking our jobs. It's 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 a rhetoric they hear so often. But I believe that this is not going to happen. And and because if you think about how humans and how AIs work, we can complement each other. Because if you think about a job you have as a voice actor, you only, you can only do six seven hours a day. You can't work twenty four seven, and you want to focus your energy on the most important gigs. Or maybe you want to do have a day job and then you want your AI voice to, to make money while you sleep. Because AI voices can work 24 seven while you're doing something else. So you record once with us providing our uh, option and then people will use it and then you will take the revenue share. So for instance, the Austin Hopkins voice, the American male hearty voice that you heard, um, he's actually one of our most famous ones and he's, he's raking in you know, a couple grand a month without doing any work. Nice. And I think you're actively, actively recruiting more voices, right? Yeah. So our goal is to get as many people on board as possible, um, because the more voices we have, the more options people have. And, you know, just, we really believe in a true partnership with voice actors because the humans can go from zero to one, create emotion, do the acting, the true nature of, of what a great voice over needs. And we can, expand that and, and really go beyond the temporal and physical limitations that you have. Very good. Whenever I talk to anyone about creating a synthetic voice or a synthetic person the, or, or singing voices that the people get concerned what, what about potential misuse of this technology. So you, you could, I guess, just describe some YouTube clips of someone speaking, and then you could turn this into a synthetic voice of them, and then you could use it without their permissions. We see lots of deep fakes happening. Right. Um, what happens if I record my voice on the platform and then someone steals it? So how do you respond to some of those concerns? 
Right. And I, I first want to acknowledge, I think those are very valid concerns. And I think whenever any new technology comes out, people are very scared. I think when internet first came out, you know, people, people were scared it's going to spread virus or when Y2K was around, you know, all these crazy things. But um, I want to reassure you that when we do get voice clones uh, or, or do clone voices, we uh, ask strict permission in verbal and audio to match with the recording that they provide. And B, we also put a digital uh, watermark, um, you know, whether it's it's in codes or whether it's in different frequency that humans can't hear, but a machine can detect. Um, so that's from a tech perspective, but we're also working with a lot of stakeholders, whether it's in, in legal, uh, policymakers, as well as some of the enterprises that we work with. Because the, the funny and more scary thing is that there's no law anywhere in the world regarding voice IP, like a human voice does not have or does not belong to anyone by law but it, it's going to happen soon and that's why we want to build a, a right infrastructure that when the time comes we can we can work with the, the voice actors to really um, you know move forward together and I think it's a double-edged sword so you know a knife is a good example you know you can create delicious meals and do a lot of beautiful things with it but it's also very dangerous and it all depends on who wields it now I, I like I love this idea of having this digital watermark in in the voice, so mm -hmm. any machine can then automatically detect that this is not a real person speaking. I think this is something that will be will be needed in the future. Um, talking about the future, where, where what do you see? Uh, what predictions have you got for this whole space of synthetic voice, and mm -hmm. and what what do you see happening in the future? Yeah, um, so synthetic voice has really. Uh, grown you know, exponentially in the past few months, or I guess a year. I think before synthetic vision, so imagine Snapchat or camera filters, all these things have been around for a few years, but the voice really hasn't done much. But lately there's been a lot of uh, technical uh, experiments and, and upgrades that has enabled this. And I think in the future, um, the line is gonna blur uh, among human voices, AI voices, text-to-speech, all these different synthetic area and, and voice industry are going to combine into one and I think we're going to see a true I, I don't like the term I don't like using popular terms but metaverse I think is is coming and you know you have avatars and VR and AR apps with perfect visual graphics but the voice is lacking and I think voice will catch up to the vision technology very very soon fascinating very good thank you so much for joining me Tom um, where if people want to find more about Lovo where do they go Sure. Um, you can find us at www.lobo.ai. Um, shoot us an email. You can find me on LinkedIn if you want. Ask me any questions. Uh, and thank you, Bernard, for uh, getting me here. Pleasure. Thank you.